Hi guys, Micro here. This is my guide and setup for Elite Clues. I go into detail about my setup and what my teleport items and stuff do. Then I also talk about how to utilize Alt 1 to its full potential while doing Elite Clues and it is so, so helpful. I can get over 12 Elite Clues per hour with the totem and double surge and using Alt 1. I know some people don't use Alt 1 and that's fine, but this guide is going to show how to do Elite Clues the most efficient way possible and that does include using Alt 1 Toolkit. So let's get right into it. Before we start, a lot of people ask me where I get my Elite Clues. I get them from two different places. Salawa Arcs are a good place. You can get four Elite Clues an hour, but you do make four million GP profit an hour, which is insane. On the other hand, you can do Shadow Creatures in a personal Slayer dungeon. You get 5.5 clues an hour, but you only make around 500k to a mil profit an hour. So you guys can pick what you would rather do, whether you want some more money or less money and more clues. These are the two that I would advise either way. So now let's get into some of the setup and stuff. Two things that are in my setup but I can't physically show. One is double surge. You can get a double surge codex from Anachronia's agility course or you can purchase it. It is around 50 mil though so it is quite expensive. You can spend about 5 hours doing the agility course with mobile and bladed dive and you can get one of these yourself spending 500 codex pages. Personally, I think it's an amazing item and those five hours are 100% worth it if you do a lot of clues, PBM and other useful things that you need the mobility for. Definitely would recommend. The other item is the Totem of Treasure. This again is from Anachronia. You need to get three pieces. The top piece is from Big Game Hunter, a 1 in 50 chance when killing dinosaurs. The middle piece is gained from the Anachronia Agility course. It's a 1 in 100 per segment, and there's 7 segments per lap of the Agility course, so essentially you get 7 chances every lap at the 1 in 100 drop. Then the last one is a base reward for finding 20 Ancient Zygomites, which is very, very easy. And once you have all 3 pieces, you put them together, you charge up the totem in Anachronia in any of the totem hotspots in the island. There is 3 of them. They are marked on the minimap with a... D&D &D icon. Once it's charged up, every single clue you do, every single tier of clue, gets its steps reduced by one. Elite steps can sometimes take quite a long time, so this saves a hell of a lot of effort. Totem of Treasure is another one that's really, really useful. You do have to renew your totem and power it up again every week. So do make sure if weeklies have reset and it's Wednesday again, do update your totem of treasure by recharging it. Now on screen is my setup. There'll be links to every single item in the description. Each number will have a item corresponding with it. That will be in the description and there'll be a wiki page link for that item as well. But I will go into a little short description of each of the items for you and just what I use them for in Elites. But if you want more information on a particular item, then you can check that wiki link in the description. Describing each item and saying how I use it does take a little while So if you don't really care for this part and you just want to see how I solve the clues There'll be timestamps in the description as well and you can skip straight there Number one is the master farmer hat It's decent to go to herbal habitat and places like that Number two is my passage of the abyss The teleports inside my passage of the abyss are the ring of dueling, games necklace, skills necklace, dig site pendant, combat bracer and amulet of glory Every single one of these pieces of jewellery can teleport me to a useful location. For instance, the Ring of Duelin is really nice to go to anywhere that's Castle Wars related, Duel Arena related, anything like that. Then you have the Games Necklace that can take you to places like Barbarian Outpost that are kind of like out the way. The Passage of the Abyss is really nice because it just compacts them all. Number three is my Tyranwing Quiver. The Tyranwin Quiver allows me to teleport all throughout Laletia and Tyranwin itself, which is super useful. Very, very helpful for elites, especially the elite scans. Grace of the Elves, I have it attuned to Overgrown Idols for Karamja clues, which is really nice. And I also have it in the Deep Sea Fishing Hub, just because that's the best for hard clues for the Fishing Guild. But you can tune it to places like Fairy Rings or Spirit Trees if you don't have the portable ones. Grace of the Elves is also very good because it can be loads of different things. The Globetrotter outfit is just fantastic for clues as a whole. It is just so good. If you want more info on the Globetrotter outfit, check the description. Number six, I have Mobile on my main hand, Drygore. 
I could combo it or get an offhand Drygo with Glowworm on it as well. And then I wouldn't require a light source. But I just use my offhand Kopesh anyway. So I only have Mobile and P3E2. But you can get Glowworm, which obviously lights up caves for you and saves an inventory slot. Luck of the Dwarves on number 7. Obvious reason for Luck of the Dwarves. Teleports to the GE, Keldegrim, everything like that. Very useful. Number 8 is my Slayer Cape, which has some useful teleports to different masters in different locations. Dungeoneering Cape. Perfect cape here. Dungeoneering Cape is probably one of the ones I use more often. It teleports you straight into Tavali Dungeon. It teleports you straight into Brimhaven Dungeon and other places. It's really good. Very, very good for certain scans. I have a Meerkats pouch. Meerkats increase the scan radius by 5 and allow you to skip wizards, so they're amazing. Sitphage Circuit Ring teleports me to the World Gate and stuff. Useful teleports. A June Crystal Teleport Seed. Unlimited teleports to different places around and about with the Elven Lands. Slayer Helm infused with Slayer Rings, so then I can go to different places like the Fremenic Slayer Dungeon, which is a scan. Ring of Kinship, the Ring of Kinship allows me to teleport to Damonheim, obvious reason. Fremenic Boots, they allow me to teleport to Relica, which is really close by the boats in order to go to Jaditso, and there it's not. Pretty good there. Dorgish Khan Teleport Spheres, there's a scan for Dorgish Khan. Very good teleport item to get there. Ectofile, easy way to get to Ectofunctus. Dragon's Medallion, I don't really go to many places other than Barrows for Elite Clues, I think. But it's still very nice to have to just teleport around and get to places quicker. Because there are some dig locations in Mauritania and places like that. Karos Clue Carrier at number 19. It carries all of my unopened clues and all my caskets. So whenever I finish a clue, it stores the casket and gives me a new unopened clue. Very nice. Saves some inventory space. Number 20 are my two rune pouches. I have certain runes in here to teleport to all of the different places that I need to go. In these rune pouches, I currently have water, air, earth, fire, and lore. That allows me to use all of the normal teleports. The Falador teleport is the one that I use the most because it's the first location I go to for arrow clues. I'll explain more on why I use Falador teleport for my elite clues in the guide. Number 21 is the Ring of Respawn. It goes to a fair few locations. One that I really like using it for is the Falador scan. It teleports me straight into the middle of Falador, which is pretty good. Number 22 is the Traveler's Necklace. Teleports me to a couple of useful places like the Outpost and north of the Wizard's Tower, etc. Number 23 is the Desert Amulet. Desert Amulet is amazing because it takes you to Uza and Narda, so it's really good for that scan clue. Number 24 is my Light Source. It's a Lantern. Like I said, if you have Glowworm on your weapon, you don't need a Light Source. Number 25 is Portable Fairy Rings. Allows instant access to all Fairy Rings. Perfect. Number 26 is a Spirit Tree Rerouter. Allows you instant access to all of the Spirit Tree Network. Again, amazing. Number 27 is Meerkat Scrolls. I use that with the Meerkat Familiar to skip the wizards with its special attack. Number 28 is the Big Book of Piracy. Very good teleport here. It takes you to places like Mostly Harmless, which is a scan location. Very nice. Number 29 is Evil Dave's Spellbook. You can store chipped teleport tabs in here like West RD. Very, very nice for the scan clues. Last and not least, number 30 is the Wicked Hood. This allows me to teleport to loads of different altars around the map and that actually comes in very handy if you have some Wicked Hood teleport tokens to stock it up. Places like the Nature Altar and everything actually comes in really nicely. That is it for the setup. Like I said, if you want any more information on any of these items, check the description down below for a wiki link. We're moving on to how I use Alt-1 to solve Elite Clues now. When it comes to scan clues, the ring underneath of you showcases how close you are to the spot. The faster the ring flashes, the closer you are to the spot. So essentially you want to utilize all your teleports, look for the spot, and if it's not in the part where you are and there's a closer teleport, teleport to the other side. Prime example of this is Haunted Woods. I use the fairy ring to go to one side of the Haunted Woods. I look around there. If it doesn't get any extra movement on the rings underneath of you, I'll go to the lodestone and then the rings are normally going faster and I can run towards the right direction and get it on the opposite side. You always want to be going and looking for any place that can get you those rings going faster. Remember to use your meerkats and your fetch casket scroll to skip any wizards that might be there with their special attack. 
So for Alt 1, typically when you load up your game or when you load up Alt 1, it'll give you this thing at the top right of your RuneScape client. You press Alt 1 toolkit and you go to the clue solver one and that's what we're going to be using for our clues and it will open up a window that you can resize and get in any position that you want. And this will be overlaying your RuneScape client. If you don't have Alt 1, you can download it in the link in the description. RuneScape have said, you know, use Alt 1 at your own risk kind of thing, but they've done that to, I guess cover their own back and I've used it for years I have loads of friends that have used it for years and there's never any issues with anyone getting hacked or anything like that it's just a screen overlay it uses your screen and you're fine if you want to update any of the settings when it comes to doing sliding puzzles and stuff like that in all one there is this cog above the guide button you can click that and you can change your move interval so it's faster or slower so you can get a speed that suits you you can then also click it so it auto starts after reading the clues. So you can open up the clue three seconds later, it'll automatically start doing the puzzle and you can just follow it. That means you don't even have to click guide. It's really nice. And make sure it has a click overlay. That is definitely the best. Click overlay is 100% worth it. Then you just hit guide or wait those three seconds after opening it and do your puzzle and just click away. Something really cool that you can do with the scan clues that not everyone knows about all one is you can right click your clue and read it. It will then show it on all one and give you a tick box to show the mini map overlay and you can increase it with the plus five meerkats range. Then on your mini map, you get a big square box and anywhere in that square means that's where you can reach with your scan radius. So if you're running next to a bit that's like water, you know you don't have to run right next to the water because you, it just needs to be inside that square. Another good thing to test at Menophos and stuff is to go to all the different places with Shifting Tombs just by right clicking the Shifting Tombs entrance, going to anywhere in Menophos. Then you just check the ring underneath of you, see if it's getting faster or slower. For me personally, the fastest part of that ring was both at the Worker District and the Imperial District. So that typically means it's going to be somewhere behind the Imperial District, fairly close to the Worker District. So I just run behind the Imperial District and it's right there. Then you get that clue done, easy peasy. Celtic knots are very self-explanatory. You just click unlock any. If it says invert paths, just hover over that and it will give you numbers. Click the arrow that many times and it will be done. Okay, so this is the biggest thing to do with Alt 1 on Elite Clues and it's going to make your life so much easier if you don't know how to do arrow clues with Alt 1. It saves so much time. It triangulates your location. What I do is I teleport to Falador, which is my personal preference for this because it's kind of central. Once I've teleported to Falador, I'll right click the teleport, press Alt and 1 over Falador teleport, and it puts Falador on your Alt 1. As you can see right here, it says Falador on there now. You can do this with any teleport. For instance, if I do it with my Luck of the Dwarves, right click it, I can Alt and 1 on my keyboard over Grand Exchange, and it will say Grand Exchange. But we're in Falador, we're not at the Grand Exchange. As long as you've got your clue open with the arrow pointing in a direction, Click Falador once you've teleported there and it'll put an arrow going downwards. You then want to show the known locations because you do want to see where it could possibly be. Then I'm going to teleport to Uglog because it's around Uglog area. Once you've teleported to Uglog, I can right click the lodestone icon at the bottom left of my minimap, hover over Uglog lodestone, Alt and 1 that one as well. Then I press Uglog on the Alt 1 and it gives another arrow going. That's literally just underneath where Mobilizing Armies was. It means I'm going to use my Ring of Dolin go south and it's going to be right there because it's triangulated my location easy peasy this works for any arrow clue it is amazing i'll give you a couple more examples for this one i obviously teleported to falador done the line the line kind of went to the northwest so i went to the world gate with my sit phase circuit ring as it's around there you could have also have went to the eagle's peak lodestone or something like that now when i press the world gate it triangulates it pretty damn well as you can see, it's somewhere above the Legends Guild. So if I go to the Mana Farm, that's probably super close. So I teleport to the Mana Farm, and you can see exactly which one it is. It's the one above that Watchtower bit. So I just bladed Dive Surge over there, get that one done. This one is very, very easy to tell. If you go to Falador, and when you put your line across, if it goes right up through the wilderness to the top corner, you can see that that's going to be Elite Dungeons too. So what I do personally is go to the Max Guild and my Max Guild portal is Dragon Kid Laboratory. So I go there. 
Although if you're not maxed, you can either use the grouping system to teleport here, or you can use the teleport tabs you buy for a little bit of Dungeonarian tokens from Damonheim. Once you're here, you literally just dig in the spot that's just northeast of like where you get there, and it's easy peasy. This one I went to Falador and it done a line up towards the Fremenic province. So I went to the Fremenic Lodestone and that should triangulate it pretty well because the Fremenic Lodestone is north of all of the parts that were marked. Then when I done the line from the Fremenic Lodestone, it literally led it right close and it was the one that's directly above the house portal in Relica. So I just ran over there, done it, easy peasy. One of the ones that people really dread is the Tranwin scan clue, but it isn't too bad with the Quiver having unlimited teleports now. So what I typically do is I'll teleport to different places in Tranwin. Like I typically go to number seven first, and if it's not here and the ring underneath of me isn't moving any faster at all, I'll go somewhere else, like number three. This is Tyrus Camp, and when I got to Tyrus Camp, the ring was moving faster, so I just went up north and it was luckily there. But if this doesn't work, you can also go to the Laletia, you can go to the Elf Clan camp, you can go to all these different places in here and it makes it so much easier. Even at the Lodestone, sometimes it can be right near there. Kind of just use your teleports to your advantage whenever you get scan clues and always look at those rings underneath of you for whenever they get faster. That's essentially all there is to elite clues and there isn't too much more to this guide. Always utilize the rings underneath of you. Whenever you get your arrow clues, triangulate your location with two different areas, starting with Falador, going somewhere else that's closer to the area where you're going. Get that triangulating going, and it's really, really nice. That's how I efficiently use Alt 1 to solve the clues. That was my setup and everything as well. Hopefully this video was useful to you. Hopefully you learned something. Do give the video a like if you did enjoy. Subscribe if you're new for loads of future content, all related to RuneScape 3. And until next time, see ya.